Brown sauce, or espagnole, is one of the five classic mother sauces. A properly made brown sauce should be rich and full bodied. In a heavy saucepan, heat clarified butter and saute medium diced mirepoix until well caramelized. Add flour of equal amount to the butter and cook. Stirring frequently to produce a brown roux. Gradually, add brown stock Add tomato paste and continue stirring constantly. Bring the sauce to a boil, add a sachet and reduce to a simmer. Simmer for approximately one and a half hours, allowing the sauce to reduce. Check the seasonings at this point. Salt and pepper may be added depending on the sauce's intended use. Skim the surface for impurities if needed. Strain the sauce Hold for service or chill in an ice bath. Bechamel sauce is a classic mother sauce that is often used for vegetable, egg, or gratin dishes. A properly made bechamel is rich, creamy, and absolutely smooth with no graininess. The first item needed to prepare bechamel sauce is onion piquet. Peel an onion and cut off the root end. Attach a bay leaf using whole cloves as pins. Add the onion piquet to the milk in a heavy saucepan and simmer for 20 minutes. While the milk is simmering, in a separate saucepan, prepare a white roux. After 20 minutes, remove the onion piquet from the milk. And gradually add the hot milk to the roux while stirring constantly to prevent lumps. Bring to a boil and reduce the sauce to a simmer. When simmering, add salt, white pepper, and nutmeg to taste.
continue cooking for 30 minutes. Strain the sauce through a fine chinois. Hold for service or cool in an ice bath for later use. The way that you do this is by whisking together egg yolks and lemon juice in a double boiler until they're hot and frothy, and then slowly whisking in butter in a thin and steady stream. As you whisk, the butter breaks into minute droplets, while the egg yolk acts as an emulsifier, helping to keep those droplets evenly dispersed and thickening the sauce. What you get is a creamy, smooth sauce with a rich texture and mild flavor that's perfect for vegetables, fish, and eggs. But there's a lot of ways it can go wrong. If you don't whisk fast enough, or if you add your butter too fast, the sauce will end up greasy and broken. If you don't cook your eggs enough, it won't thicken properly, but if you cook them too much, you end up with broken scrambled eggs. The fact of the matter is, if you want to learn how to do it the traditional way, the road to perfect hollandaise is paved in broken sauces. But here's the good news. There's an alternative method that is completely foolproof, produces a hollandaise that's every bit as good as the traditional version, and takes about a minute start to finish. All you need is a small pot, a glass measuring cup, and a hand blender with a cup that barely fits its head. We start by combining an egg yolk, a teaspoon of water, a teaspoon of lemon juice, and a pinch of salt in the bottom of a blender cup. Next, we melt a stick of butter on the stovetop until it's completely hot and bubbling. It should register about 220 degrees Fahrenheit with an instant read thermometer. Pour that butter into a glass measuring cup. Now all we've got to do is stick the hand blender into the cup, start it running, and then slowly drizzle in our butter. As the hot butter hits the eggs, they start to cook. By the time you've added all of your butter, about 30 seconds later, the eggs are fully cooked and you've got a smooth, creamy, hot hollandaise sauce that is completely indistinguishable from one made using the traditional whisking method. Hollandaise is at its best right when you make it, but if you want to store it, your best bet is to keep it in a small, lidded pot in a warm spot somewhere near your stove. Just make sure that you use it within a couple of hours. Food Lab, signing out. Uh, veluta sauce can be made with any stock. Uh, it could be fish, it could be beef, chicken, it could be if you're a hunter and you uh, love to hunt for deer, you can make deer stock and then make your veluta. So the veluta will take the name of any stock that you add to it. Today we're going to use beef stock. To start your veluta, we're going to need two ounces of flour. AP flour will work just fine. If you happen to have bread flour, that works also works really fine. And we're going to use two ounces of butter to make the roux. The roux is very important in the kitchen. It's a way to thicken our sauces. So it starts with equal parts of flour and butter. We're gonna then mix it, mix it well, and then we're gonna take it onto the stove. You have to cook the roux a little bit. We are trying to remove that raw flour taste. So in order to do that, we're going to cook the roux a little bit onto the blonde stage, and then we're gonna add the stock to it. The stock will simmer uh, uh, for about 45 minutes, and it's gonna achieve the proper consistency. Over gentle heat, we cook our roux to the blonde stage. Make sure that you don't overcook your roux. There is three different kinds of roux, white roux, blonde roux, and brown roux. The brown, as the more you cook your starches, they will lose thickening power. So at this point, we're just gonna take it to the blonde stage. Your roux has to look the consistency of wet sand. If it is too thick, just add a little bit of clarified butter. Let me just show you how it is. If you really like your consistency, if they were a little bit thinner, but wet sand is the way it has to look. But this is a stage I cook my blanc roux to then to add my sauces in. Roux is cooked. At this time, I'm gonna add one and a quart, one quart plus one cup of stock. And 
and the most important thing is my stock is cold my roux is hot please don't try to add hot stock into hot roux otherwise it will clump up and you're gonna end up with a sauce with lumps in it now at this very important stage all my roux has been in all my stock has been introduced into the roux I'm gonna really increase the heat to high heat and I'm going to stir until this reaches a boil a boiling point that will ensure that first of all I will not get any lumps and my velouté will become lumpless and also by reaching the boiling point I make 100% sure that my starch has reached proper and maximum gelatinization uh, power which is the thickening of the sauce so it has reached the boiling point as you can see the consistency of the sauce has changed and now we turn it down to a simmer you never want to boil sauces they might get ruined and might, they might scorch at the bottom now it has reached it's nice and thick we're gonna let it simmer for about half an hour to 45 minutes so that flour can really cook as you can see on the top of the sauce you have that little foam those are the impurities from the sauce and the flour that are coming to the top of the pot we're gonna remove those in a moment just make sure you don't remove a lot of the sauce just some of the foam the foam is on top and we're gonna let it go for about half an hour okay our sauce has been simmering for about half an hour proper consistency we taste it for salt and pepper we decide that that's a proper taste in your sauce it's going to look nice and velvety no lumps and it should reach what we call the nappe consistency which we should easily cover the back of a spoon as you run your finger will leave a nice trail and that is a proper consistency of a finished velouté